You might have heard that warlocks are pretty busted in Wrath, and maybe you've been seduced to play one in PvP. Today, we're going to be going over the fundamentals, covering everything you need to set up your warlock for Arena. So, stay tuned as we give you the rundown for Destro and Affliction in Wrath PvP. And just so you know, this guide just gets you started. If you truly want to get a ton of ratings stupidly fast in Wrath, then you need to check out our premium courses over at Skillcapped after this video. With specialized guides at your fingertips from rank 1 players, we teach you how to master your class by showing you how to top damage, master your CC, and teaching you how to become a live lord. While everyone else is trying to slowly figure everything out themselves, you can jumpstart the process with Skillcapped, quickly putting you ahead of the competition. So much so in fact that we literally guarantee you'll gain at least 400 rating when actively using our service. Join us today, link in the description below. Anyway, let's get into the guide, starting off with the best race on both the Horde and Alliance. As a Horde player, then Orc will definitely be your strongest option. Hardiness gets changed to having a flat out reduction on any stun against you. This makes it excellent into anything given how valuable stuns are, but more so against rogues who have access to a lot of stuns and are exceptionally good in Season 5. For Alliance players, it should come as no surprise that Human will be the strongest choice, especially during later seasons in Wrath. This is due to the Human Racial acting as a medallion trinket, which essentially means you have three trinkets in the arena. It will allow you to gain two damage trinkets from PvE and Instances, providing more damage overall. This will be especially true in Season 8, gaining charred Twilight Scale and dislodged Foreign Object, giving you an insane amount of damage. Moving on to Talents, they will also change a bit depending on your spec, so let's cover both Destro and Affliction. Starting with Destruction, we have a popular Succubus build. This mainly involves picking up Improved Syed, which will allow your Succubus to seduce enemies much easier. It's essentially going to be more common in 2v2 games, but it can work in rare occasions during 3v3 as well. The reason why it's good is that you can create 1v2 situations with ease since the quick cast time is hard to avoid. In 3v3 it will be more difficult since there are more enemies that can disrupt the succubus as well as being able to outright kill it. The core part of the build consists of picking up Chaos Bolt and Shadow Fury being your most powerful spells. Shadow Fury is commonly used as a way of getting off your Chaos Bolts or to land fears depending on the situation. Chaos Bolt will be your big burst spell which could be combined with a Conflag or Coil to improve your offensive setups. Conflag in general is also excellent for pressure, being further buffed by the Backdraft talent. Not only will it allow you to gain big burst damage, but it will help get out additional casts and globals after it's been used. A staple few talents you'll need as a Warlock is Master Summoner, Fell Dom, and Soul Link. This is essentially what keeps Warlocks alive in any arena game. Not only would you lose out on extra spells without your pet, but you will lose out on Soul Link, which will make you far more susceptible to pressure. Without a pet, you are practically half is strong. Feldom will basically give you a second lifeline, allowing you to resummon a pet quickly if it goes down. You can also use Feldom for a quick summon on Fellhunter to use Spell Lock. This can be great where the CS can help you land a kill or stop a teammate from dying. Be careful when using it though, as it can be offensively dispelled, which can eliminate the chance of you getting back a pet quickly. If you're going to play 3v3 mainly and don't want to use Succubus much, then you can look to put these three talents elsewhere. A primary choice will be Suppression, depending on your hit rating. You'll need 4% hit rating in PvP, so if you don't have this from your gear, you could put your talent points here until you achieve hit cap. Otherwise, you could look to put the points in Pyroclasm. This can help a tiny bit with extra damage when you crit with Searing Pain or Conflag. As stated before, if you don't want to play Destruction, then Affliction is the only real alternative, and your talents will look something like this. Most of these are core talents which will stay in place, with a couple being a bit more situational, which we will get into right now. As we explained before, Master Summoner, Feldom, and Soul Link will also be essential for Affliction. Once again, playing without a pet makes you significantly weaker in Arena. Unstable Affliction is the bread and butter for Affliction, giving you extra pressure. More importantly, it protects your other dots from being dispelled due to UA dealing a massive chunk of damage when removed. This will be important for protecting Corruption, as this is your most powerful dot. There are plenty of talents and Affliction that revolve around your Corruption spell, which all helps with dealing more damage. Keeping your Corruption on up multiple targets is a huge part of min-maxing damage. Corruption also provides you with self-healing, having another reason to maintain this dot on your enemies as much as you can. A big damaging spell that will be significant for your burst pressure is Haunt. Ideally, you use this when you have all of your other dots rolling, just after an unstable affliction is put up, so you can deal an incredible amount of damage. While Haunt is amazing, the problem with this ability is that good teams will stop this cast from going off at the time you want. Part of this reason is that in Season 5, you don't have very much haste, making it harder to land this cast. The other reason is that there are plenty of interrupts 
matchups in the game, and with priests and paladins having spammable magic dispel, it can be difficult to land this spell in general. Moving on, there are a couple of situational talents that you can change that depend on your own personal preference or need. Usually improved life tap is chosen, giving you a bit more mana per use, which is quite good in any arena game. However, if you need the extra hit rating, then you should pick up the points in suppression, bringing you closer to hit cap. If you don't need the hit rating or the extra mana from life tap, you could also put points in improved curse of agony. This can be nice if you want extra damage in the arena. However, other curses can be more valuable to use depending on the matchup. As such, this talent is not used too often, but is one way to min max damage. Last of all, you can swap between improved health funnel to improved health stone, depending on what you want more. Usually health funnel is chosen so your pet is less prone to dying while you're channeling the heal. However, having a stronger health stone will increase your own survivability, so the trade-off here really depends on your needs. Next up, let's go over glyphs, which can seem confusing at first. No worries though, we'll break it down. For destruction, you'll be looking to take glyphs of immolate, Conflagrate and Shadow Flame as your default three that you'll use all the time. Glyph of Conflag will be your best glyph by far, considering it keeps your Immolate and Shadow Flame up on your target when used. This makes it excellent for keeping up your DPS, having no penalty when using Conflag. The Immolate Glyph is just a straight up DPS increase in the dot damage, which is nice considering it makes up quite a bit of scoreboard damage. Glyph of Shadow Flame is an excellent utility glyph that will heavily snare targets in front of you. This can be amazing for kiting away or to stop the enemy from running out of line of sight for your next cast. Unfortunately for the minor glyphs, there aren't any notable noticeable ones that will help you out in PvP. The only one that is slightly useful is Glyph of Drain Soul. Having a chance to create more shards will be handy for Warlocks. Honestly, the remaining minor Glyph slots aren't that impactful, so choose whichever one suits your needs. As for Affliction, your major slots will include Glyph of Howl, Quick Decay, and Shadow Flame. Having a cooldown reduction on your Howl of Terror can come in clutch whether you need to peel targets or look to create offensive setups more often. Quick Decay is also excellent to improve the damage of your Corruption spell, increasing your overall pressure. And as we know from earlier, Glyph of Shadow Flame is nice as a peel or as a form of lockdown for keeping targets in LOS of casts. That being said, Glyph of Howl is replaceable for two other options. Glyph of Siphon Life could be used if you want a bit of extra healing from your Siphon Life talent. Once again, this can be useful if you're finding it difficult to survive. You could also use Glyph of Unstable Affliction instead. Simply put, this will help try to get out more UA cast by having a reduced casting time. When it comes to your minor glyphs, it's essentially the same story apart from one minor glyph being useful, being Curse of Exhaustion. Having the 5 extra yards to apply this curse is excellent as it will improve your ability to kite targets. This will be commonly used into melee where you want to keep them snared and stay maximum distance. Other than that, Glyph of Drain Soul could be used again to help generate soul shards. Having the right gearing for PvP will be in your best interest as any class, let alone for Warlocks. But remember that having a lightsaber doesn't make you a Jedi, just like having the right gear won't instantly make you a gladiator. So check out our courses on skill capped after this to start learning from the best. Anyway, let's kick things off with the stat priority which applies to both Affliction and Destro. First of all, you'll want as much resilience as possible, being your strongest defensive stat. Warlocks are naturally squishy, so having extra damage reduction is a necessity in order to live. Without this, you may be too much of a liability in the arena as you're too easy to kill. Next up, you should try to aim for around 130 spell penetration. Having your spells resist can be a huge pain for Warlocks. To bypass a Holy Paladin Shadow Resistance Aura, you'll need 130 spell pens so your spells don't get resisted. You can sort of bypass resists with Curse of the Elements, but you can't rely on the spell alone since it can be dispelled by a few classes. After Resil and Spell Pen, you should be stacking as much haste and spell power as possible. Both of these provide a great amount of damage, increasing your pressure and allowing you to get off damage with greater ease. Last of all, you want the spell hit cap which is at 4%. This will make sure your spells don't miss randomly so you won't have to miss out on damage or CC spells. With your stats in the right priority, it's time to go over your gearing, starting off with pre bis gear, which excludes arena and raiding. You want to get the 5 pieces of savage gear as soon as possible, picking up the important set bonuses plus a ton of resilience. As for the other pieces, they will mostly come from heroic dungeons as well as rep grinds. 
These give you the best stat distribution, gaining a lot of haste and spell power. When it comes to gems, there are mainly two priorities depending on what color you get. For blue gems, you want to have spell penetration gems in order to get that 130 value we talked about earlier. Outside of that, you should look to gem for as much resilience as possible. This means using orange and yellow gems, including the JC gems, which give you a bunch of extra resilience. It's worth noting that most socket bonuses are worth going for. If you play a non-human race, then you should replace your ancient pickled egg trinket for the medallion, as you'll need the hit rating from the other trinket. As for your Season 5 Biskier, things change up a bit as you'll be able to pick up a lot more PvP pieces. Most of your slots will be the Deadly Gladiator gear, following your stat priority, gaining a ton of resilience. The Helm, Boots, and Flow of Knowledge trinket are accessible from a vendor with a currency from Winter Grasp. These also add to your resilience, spell power, and haste values, which are the best stats to have on your gear. Last of all, there are a few rating pieces that you can farm, which all come from Noxramus, being the main hand, trinket, and wand. All these pieces are excellent for higher damage, so we highly recommend you getting. Again, make sure to follow the same gemming priority, picking up socket bonuses using resilience or spell penetration gems. Also, if you're not playing human, then you can change the dying curse trinket for the medallion, depending if you want the hit rating or not. When it comes to your professions as a warlock, there are only a few options for you to consider. The one profession that you should 100% have is jewel crafting. Having extra resilience from the mystic dragon's eye gems is just too good to pass up. It gives you a sizable amount of extra resilience, which is the most favored stat you want as a warlock. Aside from that, you'll have a choice for your second profession, between engineering and blacksmithing. Blacksmithing gives you two extra gem slots, which allows you to pick up even more resilience, while engineering offers a glove enchant with an on-demand haste boost or rocket attack, which are both great for extra pressure depending on the composition you play. The pyro rockets can be more niche considering you'll ideally want to play with other classes that use this as well, so you can look to global your enemies with a bursty spell that is off the GCD. Blacksmithing will be a safe bet, giving you stats that you'll have all the time. So we recommend that you choose blacksmith as your second profession, but having engineering instead will also work just fine. One of the most important parts of setting up your character are macros, so let's go over which ones you should be using. Starting off, both Focus and Arena 123 commands are incredibly helpful, as they allow you to use key spells and select opponents without needing to target them. When it comes to focus target macros, you'll want it on all the spells listed here, but you could add more if needed. Once again, this will just make your gameplay more fluid, removing the need to change targets to use quick reactive spells. You could use Arena 123 commands for this instead, depending on your personal preference. Generally speaking, you want to use Arena 123 for spells you use quite often, which is why we've included both Fear and Seduce. Just like before, feel free to use Arena 123 on other spells if you have the keybinding budget to do so. Next up, having Devour magic macros for your teammates will also be advised so you can dispel important debuffs without needing to manually click your party frames. Ideally, you should have four macros used to dispel all three players in the arena, as well as being able to dispel the pet itself. You can do this with either player name macros or party 123 macros, again depending on what you prefer. Finally, having a mouse over pet attack macro will also be nice to keep up your pet's DPS. More importantly though, you can use this to kill off important totems, especially Tremor, in order to land fears. Alright guys, that about wraps it up for this one. Let us know your plans for Wrath of the Lich King. Will you be playing Warlock? Let us know in the comments below. And of course, check out Skillcapped. We are the only service that dares to literally guarantee you'll climb at least 400 plus rating when actively using our service. And if you don't, you don't pay. Simple as that. As always though, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.